Welcome to Brand Builders TV. Deep dive topics, tools, and resources brought to you by global thought leaders from within the Brand Builders Club. This show gives you access to the strategies that you can use to move forward with ease and flow in every area of your life and business. In today's show, Mary digs deep into some imaginative ways to play with your self-saboteur. During this first session, you'll have the chance to understand what ego is and how it both serves and hinders you. Learn about your ego traps and consider how to navigate them. So enjoy part one of this six part series, learn it, model it and get shit done. Let's go. Good morning, brand builders, and a slightly late start to today's program. I do apologize. I was sat there talking to myself, thinking I was live already, and I wasn't. I was talking away to myself quite happily, oblivious to the fact I wasn't live. But I am live now, and I want to say good morning to everybody and a very warm welcome to this, my second series of programs on uh, Brand Builders TV. And this is the start of a six program series all about how to get out of our own way so that we can really be the most effective future fit leaders that we can be. And um, this series is actually going to be covering a whole host of uh, different uh, elements around how we can get in our own way and looking at our egos. We will be uh, looking at some themes from my book, Ego. We won't be following it like a Bible, but we'll be dipping into some themes and threads that come through my book. And someone's saying hello. Hello to you. Um, we are on StreamYard today. So if you could pop your name in before you actually make a comment, that would be fabulous because then I know who I'm talking to. But hello to you that's watching today. That's wonderful. Um, and as I was saying, so we'll be covering all sorts of things to do with how we can get in our own way, but also how to manage ourselves and get ourselves out of that. And today we're going to be looking at ego in more depth, understanding what that is, how it serves us, how it hinders us, and some ideas looking at our ego traps and how we can maybe manage those and, and be more conscious of what our ego traps are. In program two, we're going to look at leading others and, 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 le and the leader's dilemma in terms of the focus on task versus the behavioural elements of leadership. That will then move us into thinking more about building greater consciousness in ourselves. And also beyond that, in program four, thinking about the um, relationships that we have and the games that we can get into in our relationships and how to manage those and, and get out of those games if they're not serving us at all well. And program five will be around uh, being having conscious conversations that matter, which I think is much, really appropriate in today's workplace. Um, and program six will be a looking at organizational ego. So for some of you, you will be working in organizations and your organize, the organization you're working in will have an ego of some description. It'll be embedded in the culture and how the organization goes around doing things. And for many of you, you're also developing your own organizations. You're building your businesses. So it's worth considering what sort of culture do you want to create? What sort of eco do you want your organization to have? And I say that because I actually think that we all have an ego. You know, it'd be lovely to say, oh, we can transcend it. We can get right out of our own way. I think we can for moments. I think there are definite moments where that's possible. But I also think that we uh, have an ego there in the background and it does serve us, which is why it's so hard to transcend completely all of the time. In fact, I'm not sure we'd be a human being if we were transcending it all the time. So there is something there around what behavior patterns, what culture do you want to create that's going to that's going to reflect a really positive ego organizationally. So. Let me crack on then with today's session, which really is about understanding a bit more about ego and what it is and how it impacts us. So the first question that comes to mind for me is why bother? Why should we as leaders look at ourselves and consider what our ego is? Why is that important to us? Well, I guess I'd invite you to think about times that you get activated. So times where you might have an emotional reaction that's um, you don't understand it. You're just having it. It's like it's it's something that's going on and you might be getting very upset about something. Um, it could be anything as futile as 
for example, I used to get upset when I came home from work and the dishwasher still wasn't unloaded. I mean, that's is that such a big deal? Well, at that time it was. I was tired, whatever. And I used to go off on one, which wasn't very pleasant for my family. That was definitely an ego activation. It really wasn't that necessary. The world was not going to end because the dishwasher wasn't unloaded. Um Similarly, I share a story in my book about where I go and the room set up in, in a, a repeated program was running, despite having various conversations around negotiating around how this room should be set up, still wasn't set up as we would have liked it to be. And I really had to manage myself so well because I got so annoyed about it. So whenever we have an extreme reaction and it could be annoyance, irritation, it could be feeling really sad and upset, it's, ho it's hooked something in us. Often it's when that there's an imbalance between the situation and um, how we're reacting that indicates our egos being activated and that we're, we're actually in our unconscious reaction phase or mode. And it's not going to be helpful how we're going to act. Now, as a leader, whether you're a leader of your own business, a leader trying to make a difference in the world, being a thought leader, a leader in an organization who has lots of people to bring on board with them and navigate complex change, either way, you're in a position of influence. And the thing about leadership is we can consciously influence, which is wonderful. You know, we might think about how can I prepare this um, conversation I'm about to have? What about this presentation I'm going to do? All is that conscious preparation we can do. But it's all those times when we're unconscious that um, we are still influencing. And there's a great phrase, role model is the greatest form of influence or example is the greatest form of influence. So as a leader, we are constantly um, role modeling how to be in this organization or how to be in this world. So therefore, it's really, really valuable for us as leaders to start looking at how we get activated, what are the things that get in the way, and how do we hold ourselves back? Because the other side of the coin is I, I would imagine many of you are stretching yourselves and you're taking on new goals. I know for me, for example, doing programs like this is a new opportunity for me, and it is a stretch. And whenever we're stretched, there's also the potential that our ego will get activated because our ego is there to protect us and to keep us safe. And stepping out of our comfort zone into that stretch place, we're actually going against that kind of fundamental human requirement to feel safe and to keep those sensations of anxiety and fear away from us. So there are lots of reasons why it's important to have a look and check out what's going on with our ego and to understand that element of ourselves and to understand ourselves better and how it affects us and therefore how it affects those around us and those that we're leading. And really what we're doing here is we're starting with leading self first. So leadership is not really about status. If you're in the game of leadership because you want to look good, because you want to have a nice office or a bigger car, all of those things are perfectly valid if that's important to you. But real leadership is not about all those things. Real leadership is about how you engage others. It's about how you want to make a difference in the world, how you want to go beyond yourself and leave a legacy that is a positive legacy that you've contributed to and might not even be completed in your lifetime. But you started something and you've left it and you've left the baton to pass on for others to carry through and continue. That's what leadership is about. And to do that, we need to start with ourselves first. If we're looking outside of ourselves, that's the long, wrong place to look. We do need to look inside ourselves. And I'm conscious I've just communicated a right and wrong there because I believe actually looking outside of ourselves is a manifestation of what's going on inside ourselves. So if we look inside ourselves first, then that gives us a chance to actually develop ourselves so we can be more effective and therefore the impact and the effect we have beyond ourselves also is increased and we make a greater impact. So I've touched a bit on what ego is. I want to just sum up and clarify um, a few things about ego. 
First of all, for many of you, when you think about ego, you may be considering that it is something to do with us being big, big headed. You know, the, the press common uh, interpretation of ego is, is all about being big headed. Um, I've got I take up lots of air in the room. I've got, you know, a big space. It's all about being out there and being this big person who's only really interested in themselves. And I would say, yeah, that's one element of ego. Um, that's kind of fits into the overinflated category of ego, as I would put it. And the other, but there is another side. And the other side is the underinflated side of ego. And that is the, the little small voice that we get in our head sometimes. Some of you may be familiar with our with, with the term imposter syndrome, which gets talked about a lot these days. That is a manifestation of our ego. It's the smaller underinflated side of ego that's also present within us. And we all have the capacity to do both. But whether it's overinflated or underinflated, both of them serve the same purpose. And it's about protecting ourselves from anxiety. It's protecting ourselves from fear. And we've learned to do that most commonly when we're quite young children. And because we've learned it when we're that young, it's become a really embedded survival strategy. That means that when it's so embedded, often it is unconscious within us. And it's only as we go on our journey and start to understand ourselves better, receive feedback, start to appreciate the impact we have, notice ourselves and the reactions that we're having. When we start on that journey of really understanding ourselves better, our ego survival strategies or our ego traps, as I call them, um, become more apparent to us. And when they become more apparent, that gives us a choice to do something about them. So I talk about, you know, our awareness around our ego traps are often initially completely in our unconscious. But as we become more conscious, they are like on the edge of our consciousness, in our middle consciousness. So you may get a sudden, oh, why, do I, why does that keep happening? And what am I doing to contribute to that? That's a good question to always ask. If you keep getting the same result, for example, you think you're look, giving out a, a communication and people aren't following it, or they do something completely different. It's like that's a common thread for you, or you end up in relationships where really you end up doing all the giving and the other person's doing all the taking. Constantly ask yourself, what am I contributing to this? How am I manifesting this and, and what am I responsible for here because there will be elements of your ego that are coming into that so let's just talk about how we might know our ego is at play and then we'll have a look at the ego traps so I've already mentioned that when uh, we are in activation mode and there is an imbalance between the level of emotional reaction and the actual um, event, then usually our ego is playing up. And um, it may well be wanting to protect us from whatever it is that's a core belief that is being challenged or a core value that's being challenged for ourselves there. Um, that's one sign. The other sign is if you find yourself being in a situation of where you're right and the other person is wrong, when we are being very right about things, that is absolutely um, our ego at play. Now, I also want to point out that sometimes we might want to be right about things and that might be a helpful thing to be. So, for example, I'll share my own example. I have a belief and a purpose around creating organisations where people thrive. I personally believe that if you pay attention to your people, if you make sure that they're engaged, that they're empowered and encouraged to manage themselves and act like leaders themselves, then you're going to have a much more effective organisation. Now, I feel I'm right about that. So you could say that's my ego at play. And I think it is. I think it gives me a certain drive and a certain focus to believe that and to be right about it. 
if I'm talking to someone who has a completely contra point of view, though, and I keep trying to hammer that home and be very right about it, my ego is not going to serve me there. What would serve me much better is to understand that other person's point of view. They might have a really, really valid point of view. And it's this, it's not really helpful for me to make them wrong and to invalidate their point of view. It's much more helpful to learn from their point of view and look at what I can take on board that might shift my perspective and actually even help me develop my point of view. So that's a positive side of ego is having a point of view in the first place. But when we're making people wrong, that is a negative side. And that's where we've got to engage on a much more equanimous, equal level and uh, really learn to listen and understand where other people are coming from. The other side of ego when we might be when, when ego is present is when we're totally focused on ourselves and when we're really being, a you know, I just want to talk about me and someone's sharing a story and I'm relating it all to me and I want to share my story as well because my story is just as interesting as yours. In fact, I can make it more interesting. That is an absolute definite side of ego being present. But equally, ego can be present when we're totally focused on other. And the risk there, although there might be some advantages to that and that might be a game that you get into that we might look at later on, the risk to being totally focused on other is that we don't look after ourselves and our well-being can really, really suffer. And I know that happened. I know a lot of people. I know that's one of mine that I can come down to is that I don't necessarily look after myself because I'm looking after others. And actually, also in the long term, there's another part of my ego when that happens where I start to feel resentful because I'm not really looking after me. And actually, rather than uh, taking responsibility, I'll blame the other people for actually I'm having to do all the hard work here. Classic kind of martyr type victim type behavior there. So those are all different signs that ego is present. The final one I want to mention is when we are resisting something. So when we are resisting something, that is because we're usually in fear mode and our ego wakes up to protect us from that fear. So if you find yourself resisting something, so, you know, when Sammy first asked me to do these programs, I was kind of, oh, I'm not sure I want to. This is too scary for me. The thing to ask is, what do I need to let go? What do I need to let go in order to engage rather than resist? And in this circumstance, how I transformed it for myself was to say, actually, I'm just going to go and do these programs, enjoy them, be playful with them, see what I learn. I find that as a valuable way to manage my ego is to actually think, well, what's that, What's the learning going to be in this for me? So resistance is another sign that ego is present. And you get, I hope you're starting to get that throughout all of those, there is an underlying element of fear, anxiety of some sort that causes our ego to be activated. So let's have a look at some of those ego traps which are those fear-based ego traps that uh, mean that uh, we get caught in that reactive behavior. So this is kind of just a way of trying to classify them from, for ourselves. And I wouldn't say this list is um, limitless. I think that, uh, it, I, I, no, I would say it is limitless, actually. Um, you may find your own that you can identify for yourself, and that might be a really useful exploration for you to do but I'm just going to give you an, an example of some of the ego traps as they present to them some of the common ones that I've experienced in myself and working with leaders over the years so let's have a look at some of the overinflated ones which and I, I think the overinflated ones are identified because the reaction to anxiety is to want to dominate and to want to make sure others do something or that you just do it all yourself. But that is kind of the overinflated ones. So the first one we're going to look at is what I call do it now. So if that is your ego trap, you tend to be in a really big rush. Everything has to be done now. And you can't bear the thought of having to slow down. It has to be done at a great, great pace all the time because we get something in that ego trap about being busy. And while I'm doing, 
I feel worthy. It makes me feel better. It reduces my anxiety. So let's just do it. So that's what it does for you. And also there's a sense that the impact of that is that you might be forcing others. Um, this is one of my ego traps. And I've had feedback at times with people saying, you can be a bit like you're shoehorning me, Mary. So kind of people don't feel like they have the space to think sometimes. So it's a real case of to manage that ego trap is a really helpful thing is just to focus on slowing down, taking a breath, giving yourself some time to reflect in order that you let further insights develop that might mean that you end up with re resolutions and ideas that otherwise you wouldn't have and wouldn't have had. So it's just finding that balance and slowing that do it now drive down to a degree. The next one in the overinflated category is solo flight. And if this is your ego trap, then you will tend to be holding on to messages from your childhood about having to be strong and to um, maintain yourself really well and be able to uh, just get through things. And on the one hand, you could say that's great because you can be, use your initiative. You are very resourceful. You are resilient. And on the other side, you are not necessarily taking care of yourself. You might find that when you go on holiday or have a break, you get ill because you've been holding on to it all together and not asking anyone for support or help. And that is the way out of this ego trap is actually to reach out to others, even if it's in the smallest way or the smallest step, but to look at ways that you can get support for yourself. The other thing to note about this ego trap is if that is yours, be mindful that the uh, in sort of progress in terms of leadership and what we want to be creating in organisations these days from the point of view of psychologically safe organisations is it's valuable for you as a leader to share your vulnerabilities. And if solo flight is your ego trap, you might find that really difficult. So there is something around how can you navigate yourself around that and actually be willing to share some of your vulnerabilities. And that might be the first point of co contact for that might be just purely asking for some help. Then the next one of the ego traps we're looking at on overinflate is I'm all right, Jack. So I'm all right, Jack is really if you've got that ego trap, then you're probably quite smug. And uh, the positive is that you're grateful for what you have. Um, you know, you've, you're creating what you're creating and you see the positive in things. But there is a sense of superiority around I'm all right and therefore I'm better than when you look at other people. And that can really interfere with your ability to be compassionate with others. So that's how it you can see how it impacts you positively, but how it impacts you negatively is it can mean that you don't necessarily have the compassion that you could have with other people. And that is another really important leadership element, particularly in today's complex and fast chase, fast change and pace organizations. And then finally, the uh, other overinflated ego trap is about blaming others. And if this is your ego trap, then there's something around when we blame others, we're not we don't we can't find it acceptable to see that we might be responsible. And if we're not engaging with responsibility, then that's really going to hinder our pro progress as leaders. This is really a big one to take on. Blaming others doesn't really work from the point of view of ourselves or other people because they won't they'll feel victimized. You may well be behaving like a victim by blaming them because how could it possibly be me? It's not going to be me. Um, and it doesn't help on any score. In fact, that is the one ego trap. Currently, I can find very little positive about. That is the one that really, if that's the one that you fall into, be mindful of where can you take responsibility. And actually, again, there's an element of opening up to being vulnerable there as well. So that's the overinflated ones. Let's have a look at the underinflated ones. The underinflated ones come, you know, whereas the overinflated is all about let's push the fear down by being big and being loud and, and looking after ourselves and not thinking about others. The underinflated is really about 
being very anxious and how to manage our anxiety is much more around looking after others. So um, people pleasing, hands up. Who's a people pleaser? I can put my hand up to that one. It's another one of mine. See how we get them from both underinflated and overinflated. People pleasing is when we do all we can to make sure other people are happy and, and we get a great sense of okayness in ourselves if we're doing that. Um, and it can be a great strength to be able to look after others and create a good environment for them. But where it's a downside is we neglect to look after ourselves. And as I mentioned earlier, that can result in us having well-being issues because we're not necessarily looking after ourselves or also starting to feel resentful. And that could move us into that blaming sense of the overinflated ego if we get trapped into that as well. So you can see how these are also interlinked with each other. The next one is about never good enough. And I think that is linked to um, always seeking perfection. And, you know, the positive of that is great to have standards, have good high standards, keep looking for how you can improve but also be mindful that the more we seek perfection, the more it eludes us. Sometimes it's about being good enough and actually looking for where you have been successful and what you have achieved rather than always looking for the gaps and what you haven't. Rescue me is our second to last ego trap. And that is about, that, that's the other side of victim actually. So blaming others is one side. Rescue me is, is one where, you know, we want other people to sort it out for us. We might go into that helpless mode of, I just can't do it. And I, it's futile for me to even try. So it really holds us back. Um, and we want others to help us. And you can see how games start to form here, because if I'm wanting to be rescued, someone who's really all right might get a great sense of pride out of being able to rescue me. But from a place of maybe feeling sorry for me as well, which isn't necessarily how I want to show up and occur for people. And finally, the final ego trap we're going to mention today is being cautious. So, um, being cautious is that real trap around can't possibly take action because of the risks involved. And I need to have know to the nth degree what the risks are before I can take action. So we may engage in paralysis by analysis. That's a, a term I often hear getting used or, uh, uh, you know, really death by over analysis when we're being cautious. So on the one hand, we do want to weigh up our risks that's a positive element. But on the other hand, we don't want it to play to the point that uh, we hold ourselves back. So that concludes um, having a look at those ego traps. What I want to invite you to do is to consider what are the ones that you tend to fall into? Which are the common ones you find yourself behaving from? Where do you get activated and where do you go when you get activated? So I'm going to invite you over the coming week to just start noticing more. Start noticing when you're triggered. When do you get upset, feel angry, irritated, sad, upset, disempowered? And it's imbalanced with the situation that you're dealing with. And what's the ego trap you might find yourself falling into? And then I want to invite you to breathe into that. Just breathe and notice and do something different. Just make a choice that's different. So if it's solo flight you catch yourself in, what can you do to go and get some support for yourself? It, or could you just step back and take some breathing space? If it's pleasing others, what can you do to stand up for yourself? and to set some boundaries around yourself. So just give yourself some reflection time this week, thinking about what your ego tra traps are, and think about what you're taking away from this session, and go and reflect on that. And I really look forward to seeing you next time. And next time, we are going to be looking at um, how you can start to lead yourself first, in what is an atmosphere where there's a real dilemma for leaders. On the one hand, there's so much importance placed on the things we need to do, but also the real 
job is to focus on our being and to look at our behavior and the behavior of those around us. So we're going to be focusing more on that dilemma next time. In the meantime, have a wonderful weekend. I look forward to seeing you at 10 o'clock next Friday, which is the 23rd of October. Can you believe it? We're nearly through October already. See you then. Bye bye for now. I hope that you've enjoyed the show today as much as we've enjoyed making it for you. If you've got anything out of this episode, please do tell someone else how they can subscribe to the Brand Builders TV channel at youtube.com forward slash Brand Builders TV. Why not join us at our next Brand Builders Thinkubator, a global mastermind that we run every week to take away the loneliness of being in business on your own. For more information and to book your place, visit light.brandbuilders.club forward slash thinkubator. That's light.brandbuilders.club forward slash thinkubator. Until next time, be the ripple that you wish to see in the world and we'll see you soon.